A business news and markets are fixated not on Washington or Frankfurt, but on the U.S. resort of Jackson Hole in the state of Wyoming. That's where the great and good of the central banking world gather from today. And with inflation stretching to 40-year highs in much of the world, it could be the most controversial gathering in years. Arise business correspondent Laurie Laird tells us more about the pressure facing central bankers economic data out this week, but that means the action moves out of financial capitals across the world and to the U.S. resort of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Not usually a place where big financial news occurs, but for one week every year, this is the center of the economic universe. It's where the world's central bankers meet to talk about economic policy, to talk about what happens in the past, and to work out strategy for the future and with inflation at 40 to 50 year highs across the world. These people, these central bankers have a lot to talk about. The action gets underway today, but the really big event, of course, is Jerome Powell, the chair of the, uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve, speaking tomorrow. Now, the last time that, uh, that Jerome Powell gave a big keynote speech on inflation was only a couple of months ago, back in June, at another central banker's jamboree in Sintra in Portugal. And what he said there, the one thing that we all remember from that speech is Jerome Powell saying, we now understand how much we don't understand about inflation. Now, that may have been a, a, a welcome bit of, hu uh, of, of humility from a central banker, but I think financial markets and consumers are wanting to hear much, much more from the people that pull the monetary policy levers. So we will be watching extremely closely to see what Jerome Powell has to say. And does he have any better of an understanding of inflation? Now, specifically, I think what we are all looking Looking for is the uh, how hard is the Federal Reserve and other central banks, other central bankers will be there as well, but how serious are central bankers about killing inflation and how far will they go to dampen growth to bring inflation down? Are they willing to engineer a recession? Jerome Powell has said yes, he will do whatever it takes to bring inflation under control, but he hasn't gone so far to say that he is willing to countenance a recession in the U.S. economy in order to bring inflation under control. And we're, we're going to be looking very hard about whether he gives gives us any further clues about this. In the UK, the, uh, the the Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey has been very clear. He has said inflation, again, out of control, over 10% in the UK. That is the highest in the developed world. He has said that the that a recession is coming to the UK. The Bank of England is willing to tolerate that. The, the, the interesting thing is, is that the markets do not believe central bankers when they say this sort of thing. Uh, uh, investors, uh, consumers are all looking for interest rates to begin to come down, not up, down by this time next year. And that tells you that that uh, that markets, that investors do not believe that central banks are serious about engineering a recession to get inflation under control. So we'll be looking very closely at Jerome Powell's speech tomorrow to see if he gives us any more of an inkling about how much uh, economic pain he is willing to tolerate. Now, I mentioned Andrew Bailey. He will be attending this uh, this conference. He won't. He is not scheduled to speak at the moment. That doesn't mean he won't give uh, some sort of uh, some kind of press conference, some sort of comments to reporters on the fringes of the event. Christine Lagarde, the head of the European Central Bank, is giving the event a miss entirely. Although she is sending Isabel Schnabel, uh, one of the members of the ECB's governing council. Schnabel has been thought to be a bit of a dove, a little bit less keen on raising interest rates quickly, but she's changed her tune over the past couple of months. So we'll be looking to see what she has to say. Now, as the, the central bankers are gathering, they have a couple of things to contend with. And one is that fiscal policy, This is the, these are the things that governments can do uh, to ease the inflationary burden on consumers. Some of the fiscal policy policies that we're seeing around the world could be considered to be inflationary. That 
that is they could exacerbate the inflationary pressures that we are already seeing. Now, specifically, I'm looking at things like subsidies to energy prices, particularly in Europe. Europe has been hit so very badly by uh, this curtailment of Russian energy supplies, uh, gas prices in uh, heating prices, energy prices in Europe going through the roof. A lot of countries are talking about relief for, for consumers. You can understand where that's coming from, but a lot of countries are not targeting this, this relief at the households that need the relief the most. They are giving blanket breaks, uh, tax breaks, VAT breaks on certain fuel products. They, they will help people across the economy, but of course, if richer, if, if more prosperous households also get these breaks, they may be more tempted to spend that extra money from the government, and that could become inflationary. Let's also look at the U.S., where energy prices haven't been quite so astronomically high, but we did have that landmark uh, rule, or the landmark uh, legislation from Joe Biden yesterday, where he is canceling some student debt. This is a popular move. He has been urged by the Democratic Party to do this for years, and it will be very, very helpful for some uh, ex-students who are shouldering this debt. But again, for those who need it uh, the least, again, this could become inflationary if these these long-term payments on student debt uh, are spent rather than saved. So while the central banks are working to contain inflation, they are looking at some uh, breaks from governments that could, in fact, be inflationary.